A BBC investigation has uncovered widespread abuse on tea farms, which supply some of the world's most popular brands, including Lipton. We've been showing you how traffickers are preying on young women working at India's tea plantations. It's torture. Somewhere in this city, a young woman is in terrible danger. When you say no, he forces himself on you, wanting to touch you. In every place that there's a product being made, there will be people who are in what we call modern day slavery and will be trafficked into those situations. It reached a point that I thought of suicide. Starbucks did not provide a response. But there are still estimated to be over 100,000 missing girls out there, often unpaid, with one fifth subjected to physical and sexual abuse. The tea companies say they cannot pay another rupee more. But the campaigners who've spent a lifetime rescuing these girls say that a decent wage might at least begin to offer an alternative to slavery. Guys, it's me here, Lavender here, and today I'm going to be talking and doing a deep dive about the pure evil, the tea industry files. So we're going to do a deep dive on that, so let's get started in this video, so yeah. So capitalism puts profits over the lives of that of animals, people, and Mother Earth herself. The tea industry is no exception to this matter. With 70,000 cups of tea consumed worldwide every second, tea is second only to water and global consumption. Most of the world's tea is grown in China, India, Kenya, etc., as well as in other countries in Asia and Africa. The tea industry is estimated to involve about 50 million people worldwide in the workforce. So now on to the tea industry's impact on the environment as a whole, pollution, the climate change crisis, you know, biodiversity loss, etc. Tea production has a negative impact on the environment. Natural habitats rich in biodiversity are conversed into vast swaths of tea plant monocultures. This habitat loss leads to reduction in the general number of species and wildlife and threatens the survival of entire ecosystems in those areas. Large areas of forest have been cleared to make way for tea plantations in northeast India areas which used to be a combination of forest and grassland were home to tigers. You know, tigers are very highly endangered, you know, animal and you know rhinos are also, you know, highly endangered as well have been converted to tea plantations, destroying their ecosystem and home. In East Africa, forests are still being cleared to make way for new tea plantations. In another case, a tract of Ethiopian rainforest was sold to grow tea despite opposition from Ethiopia's president and environmental authorities. Converting forests into tea plant monocultures decreases the biodiversity of plant species, meaning Many other species habitats are lost. Habitat loss associated with tea plantations had led to the decline of the lion-tailed micat in India and in the horn plains slender loris in Sri Lanka, both of which are on IUCN's red list of endangered species. Tea and plantations not only result in the direct loss of habitat, but can impact the wider environment, such as land clearance, clearance alters the natural flow of water and increases soil erosion, leading to the loss of wetland habitats for the pollution of rivers and lakes. In the Tanzanian used Sambra Mountains, a hotspot of unique species, streams near the tea plantations have shown decreased biodiversity and overall biodiversity loss. Grown in monoculture, tea plants provide ideal conditions for a number of pests, including in the widespread of toxic pesticides. Recently, four elephants were found dead in a national park in India after they wandered into a tea plantation area and ate the grass, which had been sprayed with pesticide and toxins. The the death of cows and vultures in Assam, India region has also been blamed on pesticides and has led to renewed calls for its use to be banned in the areas. Decreasing soil pH, continuous use of aluminum sulfate and frequent application of weed insecticides and weed killers have taken a toll on earthworms as a whole which keep the soil in fine tillage. Hence, the tillage and fertility conditions of the tea estate soil have deteriorated over the past years due to the disappearance of these benefit, benefit, beneficial creatures. To meet the increased demand for tea, more and more land is being deforested and used and converted into tea plantations. Cases of land gramping or 
acquisition of land by foreign investors has been reported in many countries and several Indian tea co companies have purchased land in Uganda and Kenya. Kenya these acquisitions can affect local people who lose rights to the land they depend on and the local environment. In a recent acquisition of land in Ethiopia, the Indian company Verdetta Harvest have been accused of double speak manipulation and lying in order to purchase large areas of rainforest and land as a whole, which is home to the indigenous Magars people and convert it to tea plantations. Every tea factory produces a large amount of tea waste. If the tea waste is not disposed of properly, it can pollute the environment like the soil, water, and air in the areas. Poor management of waste can release and can raise health concerns for workers and the environment. Floods, droughts, heat waves, and storms are likely to have a severe impact on tea growing areas around the world. According to a new report from Charity Christian Aid, water logging can prevent ecological cues that can cause the plant to release chemicals that enhance the flavor of tea and that create its antioxidant properties prized as a potential health benefit by tea drinkers. These aromatic compounds called secondary metabolites, which may also help boost the immune system, have anti-inflammatory properties, or are also diluted when the plant receives too much water, resulting in leaves of lower quality and less tasty tea, so climate change is having an impact on the tea industry as well. Now on to how the tea industry treats their, you know, workers and employees and people who produce, you know, the tea. Tea plantations, especially labor-intensive work, requires and requirements lead to labor shortages and a reliance on forced child labor to fill out the workplace making tea plantations a common destination for human trafficking victims and child trafficking as a whole employers you use debt to trap workers on the plantations and impose absurdly high quotas on the workers forcing them to bring children into the fields to help them thus employers turn to the same recruit Recruiters who traffic people out of the plantations to bring laborers in from other facilities. Many of these seasonal workers are employed but are not legally registered by plantation owners, leaving them to even more vulnerable to illegal and unethical exploitation. Tea pickers are almost always women or children, while men are usually employed for tasks like pruning and applying fertilizer and pesticide. They work on their feet all day with heavy baskets on their back, resulting in injuries. Respiratory and waterborne diseases are a major risk, very high risk in these areas, since the workers are outside in such harsh weather conditions, often without adequate clothing. The workers are often exposed to toxic pesticide, insecticide, and fertilizers in those areas. The extreme poverty faced by many tea workers and employees means that children's income is vital to support their families. These factors create the conditions perfect for a child labor condition. The children may work more than eight hours a day without a break, plucking and carrying tea leaves. As the weighing stations are often several miles away from the fields, they must regularly carry extreme heavy loads. As children's bodies are not fully developed, this can cause severe long-term damage to their backs. Often denied warm protective clothing and shoes, the children may suffer from chest infections, skin diseases, cuts and bruises from the work that they do. In the tea industry, on January 5th, the BBC reported on the exploitation of children in tea plantations linked to the Catholic Church in Uganda. The supervisor said that the land was owned by the Roman Catholic Church, but it was in the business with the supervisor's employer, Kinsey Highland Tea Limited. When the BBC team visited the farm where there were up to 15 children working along with adults from the local community in that area, their work consisted of gathering young tea plants stacked at the bottom of a steep hill and carrying them up the steep hill to the location of the desired point of cultivation. The children were also tasked with weeding rows of tea plants as well. Sexual exploitation has been uncovered on tea farms that supply some of the UK's most popular brands, tea brands, including PG Tips, Limpton, and Singbury's Red Label. More than 70 women on Kenyan tea farms owned for years by two British companies told the BBC they had been sexually abused and sexually harassed by their supervisors. Secret filming showed local bosses on plantation owned by Ewan Glover and James Finlay & Co. pressuring an undercover reporter for sex. 
a joint investigation for BBC Africa I and Padorma found evidence that the allegations of sexual harassment were not being acted on. A number told him that because work is so scarce, they often were left with no choice but to give in to sexual demands of their bosses or face having no income at all. A victim of capitalism, a worker, a woman, said a divisional manager stopped her job until she agreed to have sex with him. One woman who also told the BBC that she had been infected with HIV by her supervisor after being pressured into having sex with him. To gather more evidence about these alleged allegations of sexual abuse taking place on these plantations, the BBC recruited undercover reporter Katie, not her real name, to work on the tea plantations. In one instance, Katie was invited to a job interview with a recruiter for James Finlay & Co. called John Chubok. The interview turned out to be in a hotel room. Mr. Chubok, who was worked on Flinley's plantations for more than 30 years, first as a estate manager and then as the owner of a contradicting company, had already been flagged as a predator by numerous women who spoke to the BBC's Tom Adula. Katie was pinned against a window by him and asked to touch him and undress. In India, in India, who are targeted by human traffickers, young girls from tea plantations are easy targets. They live in poverty and have very little education, and their parents are often saddled with debt. Human traffickers approach the girls as placement agencies offering them work in cities such as New Delhi. Police say the young girls see placement agencies as a way to escape the cycle of poverty, lured by promises of good jobs and steady incomes, so they are often to find themselves sold you know, as a slave, as domestic labor, and denied wages, or overall forced to work in the sex industry, in brothels. Police say hundreds of girls in tea districts fall victim to human traffickers every year. Adult workers on these tea plantations are promised the equivalent of one to two dollars two US dollars per day around and plus two dollars per day in in-kind services including housing, primary education, and medical services, none which is regulated, provided as promised. Workers live in broken down shacks, commonly featuring damaged roofs, lacking electricity, no running water, multiple families are often forced to share a single working toilet while other septic tanks are overflowing into workers' living quarters. Further medical College's medical director reports 9 out of the 10 patients living on tea plantations suffer from malnutrition, potentially fatal diseases of poverty such as diarrhea, respiratory tract infections, tuberculosis, or meningitis as a whole. Are also widespread, many victims interviewed in India were descendants of chatter slaves still living in under inhumane conditions of those endured by their ancestors over a century ago, over a hundred years ago, thus recruiting agents offers for lucrative jobs in more modern city were enticing to young people looking to break the poverty and illness cycle flat found on these tea plantations. When it comes to COVID-19 and the pandemic, when it comes to the workers, pandemic comes to India's tea gardens. Access to sanitation is crucial in stopping the spread of COVID-19 and, you know, this pandemic. According to the latest reports, over 200 workers from at least two tea gardens in Assam's district have the virus, prompting the dis district administration to lock down the estates. A public health worker from Assam who, who requested to remain anonymous pointed out that hand washing with hand sanitizer is essential to curbing the outbreak. He said in the tea gardens, people can't afford hand sanitizers. They primarily use water and soap, but people don't have access to clean water to even wash their hands, then it will be difficult to contain the spread of the virus. I wanted to bring Starbucks up because they sell tea. So in June, Starbucks permanently closed its busiest store in Inthika, New York, after the new, newly unionized baristas there went on a short strike to protest unsanitary conditions. Labor leaders have denounced these closings as a deliberate act, moves to discourage and defeat unionization to warn workers at the corporations, other stores, and retaliate against them for their union activities if they seek to unionize. 
but to chill overall enthusiasm about unionizing, federal law makes it illegal to fire a worker in retaliation for supporting a union, but as we all know, Starbucks is known for the union busting. And here's another true crime case. Scottish court allows 700 workers to sue James Finley for alleged unsafe working conditions at Kenya Substary. Aberton Tea Company facing a claim for more than a thousand workers lose appeal against illegal action in Kenya. In the latest hearing of the case, Andrew Smith Casey told the court in session in Endingsburg that one of the farm workers was walking along a remote road in Kenya when a truck driven by J. FKL employee tried to run him over. Mr. Smith said the worker managed to jump over into the bushes before the driver hit him, told him he was being targeted because he was suing JKFL. The court heard further details and allegations over events at a meeting between the farm workers and their lawyers. Mr. Smith said a confidential legal file was stolen at the meeting by the individual working for the JKFL. FKL and fo photographs of the workers were taken by members of the JFKL's security team. He told the court that something of an altercation took place and the security team's mobile phones were confiscated. Mr. Smith claimed one of the workers was later assaulted by police officers. There is the most gross in intimidation taking place of those who are suing JFKL and they are being targeted because they are suing them. Mr. Smith said...